Hey, Sydney. My name is Nate. Welcome to the Geek Centric Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. I get to talk to all you lovely folks. So it's been a good day. Um, uh, I got to start off by saying we here at Geek Centric are head over heels in love with Reservation Dogs and your work on that show. And I I loved how it was, you know, not only able to tell uh, an authentic, you know, show an authentic representation of of res life uh, and indigenous culture, but also how it, it taught me so much through the stories of of love and hardship and especially laughter. Um, with with Echo, how do you feel this series is continuing to push forward that same representation? Oh, you know that that's that's interesting. I think I I, I think there's this sort of there's this common misconception about Native American Indigenous people that we're all just sort of like one big monolithic group of people. You know, we all, you know, we all uh, have feathers in our hair. We live in teepees and we have casinos and uh, we don't pay taxes, and uh, which I wish was the case, but it's not. Um, uh, uh, but all of those are, are far from far from the truth. You know, there's, there's, you know, hundreds of different tribes in the United States alone, different languages, different cultures, different traditions. And so I think one of the great things that I, I love about this series is that we get to explore um, another diverse uh, culture and tribe and tradition. So, you know, like, uh, you know, in the same way that the Reservation Dogs got to explore like kind of, kind of contemporary life and, and embracing the humor that that's like pervasive in Native American communities, uh, we tried to, you know, you know, what's great about our series is that we get to explore the specifics of the Choctaw Nation, which you know, um, I'm sure has been represented on, on film before, but, um, you know, for us, it was all about leaning into the specifics and uh, engaging the Choctaw Nation uh, to tell as authentic a story as possible. Well, and I, I, I absolutely adore that because I, I love how, at least from the episodes I've seen so far, I've seen three, uh, and so far they they each sort of start off by showing a moment throughout Choctaw Nation history. Um, I want to know, you know, for, for yourself and your team, what what went into the decisions behind focusing on those specific moments within history to share? That's a great question. You know, I think I think it stemmed from our again for myself when I first came on board. One of the first things I wanted to do was was uh, meet with the Choctaw Nation and basically do two things. One was ask their permission. You know, which which sadly is something that is not true. has not traditionally been done in Hollywood. Uh, when it comes to representing uh, Native Americans. Um, the second thing that was important for me was to create a dialogue. You know, uh, we wanted to be uh, respectful. We wanted to be authentic in our portrayal of the, the culture. But in the process of, of having these conversations and learning, you know, what their what their history was, what their story was from their perspective, uh, we learned about the things that were important to them. You know, it wasn't second, third, fourth hand information. It wasn't something that we read in an archaeological text. Um, it was the stories from the Choctaw themselves, you know. So um, I would say our ancestral storylines kind of sprung uh, uh, as a direct result of that collaboration. Well, I, I got to say, like, I, I've always loved shows that can entertain me, obviously, but shows that can entertain me and then also get me so interested in their subject matter. Um, it's just a, it's just such a plus for me. Um, focusing in on Maya, I, I'd love to know for for your experience as a director, what's it like directing an antihero story uh, in comparison to maybe some of the other protagonists uh, that you've directed in the past? Oh, it's, it's a it's a very it's a very exciting uh, sort of space to be in. You know, um, you know that was one of the things I loved about the character in Hawkeye. You know, she she was a villain. Um, yeah. And in the conversations with Marvel and, and talking about the different ways we could pursue the the character, like their response was like, "Let's lean into that. Let's uh, let's embrace that aspect of her. Let's not shy away from it. Let's push the envelope and see how far we can go with things." Um, so that with that as our jumping off point, we really got to you know sort of like set a tone that was a little darker, was a little grittier, was a little more street level, was a little more on the violent side. But again, it all stems from story, right? Like we wanted to. Uh, we wanted, we didn't want to shy away from circumstances, uh, uh, but but in, in doing so, it allowed us to hopefully tell tell a better story. Well, I, I'm again, I'm loving the series so far. Uh, I think it's you know it's 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 again, it's just something that I'm I'm so excited to continue watching. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I just I can't wait to see where the story goes next. And I'm also really looking forward to Res Ball, so uh, hey. I can't wait for that one as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, picture uh, picture locked. We're working on it as we speak yeah perfect amazing well thank you so much again sydney thank Cheers. you so much
Hey, Richie. My name is Nate. Welcome to the Geek Centric Podcast. How are you doing today? Good. How are you, Nate? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I get to talk to the lovely folks from Echo, so it's hey. been it's been a good day. Um, I got an easy one to start off for you. Uh, this is Marvel's first project under the new Spotlight banner. Uh, what does that mean? Well, <laughs> uh, Maya Lopez, as you know, is a character from the comics, uh, and she is a more obscure character from the comics that kind of came from... Uh, her own very dark and gritty violent world in this run of Daredevil comics by Joe Quesada and uh, David Mack. And at the time in those comics, they were they were much darker and more violent than anything else that was kind of going on in the comics universe at the time. And you didn't really need to know what was going on in Avengers and Spider-Man at the time to enjoy them. I think we're just trying to honor that and, and tell the best story for Maya Lopez that we can, which means uh, she's a little removed from the larger MCU. You're not you're not seeing CG aliens flying around New York City in this one. It's actually just a it's it's small town vibes in Oklahoma. And it's a real character driven story about a, an emotionally complex woman. I love that. I love I love seeing that. We can have both the big, crazy, connected storylines, and then we have these more uh, yeah. character-focused ones. Still in um, the MCU, but just more character-driven and uh, more intimate. Totally. And I mean, but on that, though, within the Disney Plus MCU series that we've gotten so far, do you think there's any others that could fit under that banner or that we might see under that banner one day? Uh, I definitely think you'll see more spotlight characters in the future, again, because there's there's a number of same level of obscurity as Maya Lopez in the comics. You know, a lot of people haven't heard of Maya Lopez before we introduced her in Hawkeye. Uh, I mm-hmm. think that's the fun of where we are right now at the studio, that with television we can introduce a number of these characters from the comics that are on Maya's level of obscurity and bring them to the forefront and literally put them in the spotlight in that way. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I've had the chance to watch the first three episodes of the show so far. I absolutely love it. Um, there's there's uh, such an authenticity in every frame of the show. And I, I had read that the team, uh, as well as yourself, worked alongside key members of the Choctaw Nation yeah. every step of the way. What was that like? And was there anything in particular that you learned through that experience? It was amazing. Once, once we decided in the writer's room that Maya would be Choctaw, we created an instant partnership with the Choctaw Nation. Um, we worked directly with Chief Batten, which was an honor to get to work with him. And he allowed us, you know, um, resources that we couldn't believe in and access to his team members that are key historians of Choctaw culture or the language or, you know, down to the food uh, on our sets was was made by real Choctaw people. We had real fry bread that was made by real Choctaw people uh, in the background of these. It was it was unlike anything we've ever done at the studio. And it was all in an effort of just telling the most entertaining story possible about this badass character that was Choctaw. Yeah, I, I, I was saying to Sydney just a moment ago that I I love how this show is a it's so entertaining, but it's also so it's so very educational. I'm learning yeah. so much uh, about uh, about their history. And it's just I, it's it's beautiful. Um, now, I know Marvel is obviously careful with spoilers, so this might be tough to answer. But is there a moment or an interaction that you're most excited for fans to see in these next five episodes? Yes. Without spoiling anything. There, <laughs> well, there's some awesome fight scenes. Yeah. Uh in the episodes you watched, there there's some cool Choctaw specific sequences that uh, I don't think the public has gotten to see yet that stand out for me as some of my favorite parts of the show. And then there's some there's some brutal action sequences in there as well with some awesome music. Um, there's a lot about this show that I am excited for the world to see and see how the fans respond to. Yeah, I would absolutely agree. I think I know the moments you're, you're talking about, and I think they're so far they're some of my favorite parts of the show. Um, okay, my, my last question here, age old question, we've gotten to talk to uh, a number of executive producers at Marvel and all of you seem like just huge Marvel geeks and we love it. We absolutely love getting to, to chat with fellow geeks. So uh, the age old question, uh, if you could see Echo team up with anyone in the MCU or in Marvel in general, who would you want to see her team up with? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to answer it solely as a comic book fan because of how you teed it up and this has nothing to do with anything at the studio. Otherwise, I'm going to get in trouble. Um, (laughs) Totally. I would like personally to see Maya Lopez team up with someone like Nova because I would love to see uh, Choctaws in space. And I think that's how we get there. So so that's my very direct and specific answer to that question. But that is truly my fan ficky brain going. So I... uh, Fanfic or otherwise, that uh, I got, I got, I got chills. I got goosebumps. I love that. Thank you so I'm much. Gonna get in trouble for answering that question. But space, <laughs> space Choctaws. 
is this yes, yeah. Ke- if Kevin's listening, Kevin, don't 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 get upset with Richie. It's it's uh, it's you. all in good fun, dude. Thank you so much for having this chat with me. Um, you know, I think uh, again, I'm 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 excited to see where the show goes after these first three episodes, and I'm just loving it. I can't wait to see where it goes next. So thank, thank you so you. much. Cheers, buddy.